MTV has released season two of their reality show, MTV No Filter, colon, Tana Mojo, which of course centers around the infamous storytime YouTuber that we all know and love. If you thought season one suffered from a lack of focus and zero direction, then I've got bad news for you about season two. Episode one of this season lets me know that Tana Mojo is even more unfocused, with more chaotic energy, and even less of an understanding of who her audience is than ever before. And in case that's not enough, we don't even know who the star of this show is yet. It's hard to tell anymore. Trevor, welcome to the gang. We're confused. So join me today, whether you've seen the first episode or you're just getting a little preview taste here, I'm gonna break down for you the best and most unconventional parts of Tana Mojo's TV show. And you can let me know if I'm tripping or if this show is both a waste of time and sort of my new religion. It's another clip breakdown with Nick DeRamio. Stay tuned, baby boy. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another clip breakdown. This is a playlist where we dive into the best TV shows, particularly reality or TV movies, and I cut right through the clutter to the best parts that really distill for us why humanity is so great or hopeless. We don't know, depends on the network. And in this case, it's MTV Unfiltered. They're trying really hard to make me feel sad about life on Earth, and it's, you know, working. I didn't cover season one of Tana Unfiltered, or whatever. It was actually, the first season was called Tana Turns 21, because it revolved around Tana's 21st birthday, but then quickly devolved into being about her fake marriage to another infamous YouTuber, Logan Paul. No, Jake Paul, his brother. I always confuse those two because I just, I just don't like them both. If I'm being completely honest, I don't love the content that they make on their channels. That being said, I guess Jake Paul is going to be a part of this season too, but we don't see him in episode one yet because this revolves around a new kind of romantic figure, I guess, in Tana's life. I'm not sure how to explain it, but I'll do my very best. First, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns just like this. Most importantly though, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on that notification bell so that you never miss them or you'll miss them. I don't know what to tell you. It's getting dark outside. I'm sorry. I thought it would be enough natural light to shoot this, but we'll deal. So we were off to a rocky start with uh, this episode one of Tana's TV show before I even started watching it because the title is 100% clickbait and it spoils its own clickbait in the description. It says, is Tana's manager leaving her for good? When I saw that title, I was like, oh, Jordan, who was her manager in the first season, is was a big part of the first season actually. Really the only responsible person it seems in Tana's life. And even that's not saying much because he's her manager, who also lives in her pool house. If you're uh, working in entertainment, you don't normally have to have your staff or your manager live in your house with you. That's a little bit too close for me. Why doesn't he have his own house? Are you not paying him well enough that he can have his own rented apartment somewhere? Come on. Ugh. I'm sorry if I sound sick, because I was sick. This title would have you believe that Jordan is leaving Tana, like she's no longer going to be his client. And that had me like, oh, this is gonna be an exciting first episode because she needs him to survive. I don't know how she would get anything done without him. And even then, he's mostly there just to be on the TV show. So I don't know how she, how her life looks in real life. Anyway, let's start watching because right away, you realize he's not leaving her for good. That's kind of a misrepresentation. Let's jump in with the first clip. You'll see what I mean. Jordan has been working out of my pool house and now he's moving to a bigger office space. I thought we're supposed to be like helping you pack. Why do you have to do it at all? Yeah. We're kids. <laughs> Dad, we're your kids. At what point does it no longer sound cute to call yourself a kid to justify the pointless things you do? Because that's a 22 year old woman right there. She owns a house. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think this is where I really start to get confused about Tana Mojo. It's like, that makes it clear for me that you have an audience of 12 year old. And I think that's always been true for Tana Mojo. She became famous with her story time videos where she's like, this crazy thing happened to me. My life is so random. And like me and my friends are kind of dirt bags, but like we love it. It's like literally a YouTuber who's just appealing to the skater girls that I went to high school with, you know, who thought they were so edgy because they shopped at Hot Topic. We all grow up and move past that. I think Tana's still confusing me because she's clearly trying to appeal to that generation. She dresses now like Billie Eilish, where like last season she dressed like her then friend Bella thorn so I mean she just seems to kind of chase the hype and if you justify something like stupid because it's because you're a kid and you're actually not a kid that just highlights how immature you are 
Anyway, as you saw, the title is misleading because Jordan's not leaving her for good. He's just moving out of her pool house, which good. You should have a separate office space. And they totally make it sound like he's been working out of my pool house. No, he's been living there. You already told us that in the first season. He sleeps and eats and goes to the bathroom there. Why doesn't he have his own house? Why does he have to live with you? And then it kind of becomes clear throughout the episode that it's because he takes care of her. She needs him there to, to help her. Anyway, the moving out brings us to our first sort of really contrived plot point for this episode. They were struggling to produce a story for episode one. Yikes. Why don't we have like a yard sale? I'm down to have like a fun yard sale. Like making money like normal people, like not influencers. That's actually fire. Ooh, yeah, a yard sale like normal people. That would be really good for us. This is the kind of plot device that reality shows start using in like season six, you know, when they're really out of the exciting stuff. That's like keeping up with the Kardashians now. If you watch that show, every episode they're like, what if we got a DNA test to see if we're part dog? And it's like, of course, it's just some stupid thing that any of us could opt to in to do. It's not like, oh my gosh, this drama surrounding a photo shoot because we've seen it already. They're trying to make stuff up. And this is the same thing for Tana Unfiltered. They're just like, I'm calling it Tana Unfiltered because I don't know what the real title of the show is. They don't seem to want us to know, so forget it. Anyway, they're like inventing things for them to be doing now. And she's like, we're gonna make money like real people, not influencers. What real person makes money off a yard sale? Influencers are the ones with their, those like, what are those websites where they sell all their clothes? You know, influencers love that kind of stuff. So this takes up, you know, it's a 20 minute episode. This takes up most of it, the yard sale thing. So Put the glitter on the YSL to remind them that yes, we're having a yard sale, oh, but so we cool. are still in what? fact rich. <laughs> And that's Tana's best friend, Omari, who is was in season one. And the uh, the blonde girl is her other friend whose name I can't remember. She, I like her. Sorry, I feel like I'm itching my armpits a lot in this video. <laughs> I just realized. Normally, I you can't see my armpits. <laughs> I crop it right here, but whatever. I like Omari too because he's bisexual and I'm like into queer visibility, but he's not funny. Apparently, everybody in Las Vegas when he was growing up told him he was funny because they all like, ah! Every time he says anything, and it's like the stupidest jokes my little cousin would make. I don't have a little cousin, but if I did, I would be like, shut up, you sound like Omari. He's just constantly saying snobby sounding things that are meant to be like, oh, that caught us off guard because like you're so self-aware. Really though, it just makes you sound like you don't know what you're talking about. Because nobody knew who any of these kids were until Tana got famous, you know? In comes a new character who we did not get to meet in the first season, Trevor Moran. Hey bitches! <laughs> Imagine being the kind of person who sees someone walk into a room and you get to just scream. <laughs> like that was really scary how she screamed. You would have thought someone had a knife. Trevor, we learned in the behind the scenes special is like the third roommate, but doesn't actually live there. Trevor Moran was my first real friend in Los Angeles. Trevor does not live with me. It kind of feels like it. Trevor's always at my house. Trevor is some sort of singer or some sort of musician and a YouTuber. So Tana and Trevor talk about this for a little bit. Did you guys know Tana's a singer too? God, don't worry. We'll find out all about it. I've literally been listening to your new single though, like every, every, every second. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so fire. I've always looked at Trevor as just like a pop star, an entertainer. <laughs> Trevor walks into a room and everybody turns their head. Okay, we just met Trevor, but clearly Tana is obsessed with Trevor. She's like, Trevor's so cool. Trevor did this once. I love when Trevor sings. Trevor's like the best singer. Are they trying really hard to make up for the fact that Trevor was cut from season one? Because it seems like it. They're doing a lot of backpedaling. Like Trevor's actually the greatest. Trevor was cut from season one because we didn't know how great Trevor was yet. But here's Trevor. All I know is this single came out the day after this episode episode aired or something like that. So insert crickets here. There's a lot of promotion of Trevor in this episode. Does Trevor have a deal with MTV? That's all I'm asking. And in case we didn't know enough about Trevor, MTV also really wants to apparently add in some like messaging about addiction in here. Maybe that's in some way a response to the fact that Tana is known for talking on her channel about drinking underage back when she was under 21, doing drugs like prescription benzos she'll talk about, doing Adderall. She's not really brand safe in that way. So maybe that's why MTV was like, let's add some recovery talk into this episode. I started making music as kind of a joke. And I didn't think I realized 
that that many people would listen to it. I should probably make some other music and try to get better. This is Tana's whole brand, by the way, ever. If you ever watch one of Tana's videos, this is her whole attitude. It's like too cool for school 16 year old girl who can't take a compliment, has to be super glib about everything. Like, I guess I got like the highest grade in the class out of like the whole art class because my watercolor was, I guess the most realistic. I don't know. Like my teacher wanted to put it up in the end of the year art show. And I was just like, I guess I'll try to win. And then I won. So I, I guess I'm award winning artist now. You know how teenagers do that kind of thing sometimes? That's Tana. It's like own your success. A bunch of people watched your really bad music video. I don't think it's worth like humble bragging about. I'm just letting you know. Now we go to Trevor and Mod Sun in the studio. Mod Sun is a music producer that both Trevor and Hannah Tana have worked with. He looks like his breath smells, just saying. I'm sure it doesn't. Mod Sun, you look like your breath smells. <laughs> I met Mod through Tana when they were in some three-way relationship with Bella Thorne. I don't really know. See, more stuff. Like, Tana loves to be super mysterious about her crazy, edgy life. She's like, are we or are we not in a three-way relationship? You'll never know. That's to me how you can tell this show is for kids. Everything is like, <laughs> super controversial. Like, I don't actually care if you're in a three-way relationship with some guy with long hair and some girl with pale skin. That doesn't matter. Like, this is LA. You're in LA. I know so many people in a three-way relationship, it's boring to me. In the come to West Hollywood, in the gay community, you'll have 16 boyfriends before it's even considered weird. I just said boyfriend's weird. Boyfriend. Who wants to be my 16th boyfriend? Boyfriend. Be my boyfriend. Oh, I need a boyfriend so bad. Okay, so anyway, who cares how Mod Sun and Tana met? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. The sun is coming out. Trevor's working on a single, but then Tana is also recording a song with Mod Sun, so they take a minute to listen to that, but not without us first getting a glimpse at Hannah's health complications that will become a part of this season. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Kind of want a mask? Like, what do we call 911? I'm so uncontagious, though, I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't catch emphysema. That's just the me issue. Oh my god, I'm so scared. I know that I shouldn't care, but I can't breathe I admit, from that little clip I heard, it did sound like Tana's new song has more production value and, you know, it sounds a little bit more mainstream pop. Kind of sounded like Leona Lewis, didn't it? Like Leona Lewis bleeding in love. Um, bleeding love, I mean. Not what, I agree, it's not what I would expect. Also, it doesn't sound like her, so that's very interesting too. A lot of microphone tricks, perhaps. Because I don't know when Tana recorded that, I'll just say this, because here's how it sounds live. Why well, should we try to do that right now? <laughs> My lungs are just like failing me right now. Like, Your lungs? Yeah. Like, well, that's not like good. Why don't you stop so smoking much. weed? So they make her whole coughing fit about the fact that she smokes a lot of marijuana. I don't know. This doesn't ring true to me. You know, I feel like there might be something we're not seeing on camera. Like maybe Tana smokes cigarettes and they're not ready to show uh, someone exposed to this demographic addicted to cigarettes. So they're like, let's keep that off camera. Let's make this about smoking marijuana marijuana, which is, you know, we can take this whole recovery aspect of it. Whoa, overexposed, look at the sun. All right, where was I? So yes, the recovery side of things quickly comes in. This is like halfway through the episode, I'll let you know. And I just feel like nothing has happened yet. Do you feel that way too? Cause nothing has happened yet. I'm sitting here talking about nothing still. Meanwhile, I have a cough too. Cause I went to urgent care and I picked up a virus there. Cleaning up isn't lame. I recently made the conscious decision to Go sober. And I feel like I've really seen Trevor struggle in a lot of ways. There's no f way, guys. It's like 7.30 in the morning. I like Trevor's recovery storyline. I mean, I'm all here for it in theory because again, LGBTQIA plus visibility on mainstream television is a big deal. And Trevor is bringing a voice to addiction and alcoholism within that community, which again is something that doesn't get really spoken about very much. So I think it's great. But at the same time though, I'm just like, who is Trevor again? You have to remind me. How is that related to you, Tana? This is a, your show. This is supposed to be your show. You're talking about Trevor every two seconds. We listened to Trevor's single, which I now know came out. You guys, this sunny, sunny cloud situation. I'm so sorry. 
that the lighting is so inconsistent in this video. You just have to deal with it, like Trevor. Tana would be like, you know who's really good at dealing with sunlight? Trevor. Trevor is like so magical at dealing with lighting changes of all types. So anyway, I guess this just feels like filler to me. Unless this is gonna be a continuing storyline, Trevor's sobriety throughout, which even then I'm like, okay, that's also not Tana's storyline. But in case it isn't, then I'm like, this is just filler. What are we talking about? Next up, we have a scene where Omari, the blonde girl whose name I always forget, and the and Tana's assistant who barely gets any screen time, they're advertising for the yard sale. And this is not how you advertise for yard sales, so I don't believe that this is real. Yeah! We're out here on the street advertising our yard sale, and I know exactly how to give the people what they want and attract them to our house. We're hot. Free on all purchases. Ours really just looks like we're trying to get See, I don't think you guys are hot. I think you guys look like children. You look like kids who go to the, like Hollywood High School down the street where I'm like, ugh, I don't wanna be near these kids too long because I'm I'm too old to hang out with them. That's what it feels like to me because you're acting like children. I know this is staged because these are the people who are running the yard sale a few scenes from now. Like they're at the yard sale being there. So how are you holding up signs sending people to a yard sale and then you're gonna meet them there later? Like you're just gonna hold up signs for a few minutes and hope they remember the info like you're supposed to put the yard sale sign up when the yard sales happening and just staple it to a tree this is not a car wash you just needed something cinematic the producers were like why don't we have a like uh, you guys can hold your signs up on the street corner and try to get people to honk that's a scene that can be five minutes of screen time surely Ugh. these are supposed to be the celebrities that we want to watch because they have exciting lives that are better than ours I would rather live my own life than watch this show I would rather do laundry because I'm more exciting when I do laundry than these people when they have millions of dollars to their name I can't wait to watch this whole season it's gonna be good so the yard sale has finally happened the huge set piece that this whole episode has revolved around. I think we're gonna make a lot of sales today. I brought an electric wine opener. Did you just catch that? This is the kind of thing we have time for in a 20 minute episode of MTV Unfiltered colon canum, Tana Mojo. Just nonsense, just nonsense daily. Oh, now it's the darkest it's ever been. Why don't I just stop messing with camera settings for two minutes and tell you about this show. Trevor and Jordan are having this scene with a wine opener like who, who cares? All I know is, yeah, this this looks like the worst yard sale ever. Like, there's garbage laying on tables. They couldn't even be bothered to actually put a yard sale together. They ended up with trinkets, so they have to make that part of the show now. I ended up just throwing all my stuff out from the office. Wasn't the entire premise to be selling items from Jordan's office? And now we just have a table with bras and boxers. What are you doing? I'll be here. Maybe this is mean to say, but Tana Mojo is, to me, the ultimate fashion victim. Look what she's wearing while she's laying on the ground right now. Just everything Billie Eilish said was cool over 2019. That's what you're wearing. And now everyone's dressing like my tomboy cousin did in eighth grade. You know, I just can't. Laying on the ground there with that arcade prize pillow, and it's been raining, and she's in sweatpants. Like, there's no way that's more comfortable. She's trying to be like, oh, Tana's brand is that she's always late. She doesn't care, she sleeps through it. It makes you look crazy if you think sleeping on the ground with a pillow is more interesting than sitting in a lawn chair at your stupid, stupid yard sale that you told me was a good idea. Ugh. Also, I don't know where this yard sale is. It looks like it's hidden from public view, like it's in a hidden area, so I have trouble believing that this, any of this is real. We have a first sale! Woo! I've been to a yard sale, and normally the people that are selling this are like sitting down Relaxing. This is a full-blown car dealership. $20? This is $5. This is $5. I don't know, Trevor. I think haggling for prices is actually really common for people to be doing when they're selling stuff at a yard sale. You know, see, that's what I hate about this show. They're doing stuff that everyone would do at a yard sale, and they're like, this is just how crazy we are because we're this crazy and young and wild and free. No, it's none of that. You're not that. Go home. <laughs> Maybe that's my main critique of Tana Mojo is that her whole brain Brand, all of her friends, this whole show, her whole life, it's all appealing to these not like other girls, you know, people who think that they're cool and different and more brash and wild than everyone else. Me and my friends, we party on weekends. Well, I was these kids too once, I just didn't have a platform to talk about it. Also, I was like the gay version of this. This is a little too straight for me, all of it. A little, a lot of straight white energy coming out of Tana's unfiltered TV show. So I wouldn't say no filter, it's sort of like filtered through the lens of privilege, but Hey, go off. Meanwhile, it's nighttime again. They did a phenomenal job advertising. 
How are all these people coming? Well, based on those lower thirds, it seems like Tana texted a bunch of her friends who all look like they live in a bus stop and they all came by to be on TV and look at your garbage. Stop acting like they did an amazing job advertising if everyone is coming as a friend and they insist on having their name shown for clout. Do you really want me to go look up Makoa on Instagram just because I see his long hair on TV? <laughs> I can't, I can't. Somebody buys a, a lap dance from Trevor because what is Trevor to this? <laughs> Trevor could absolutely be a fire, high-class stripper. He is slaying this lap dance. What? Now Trevor's a lap dancer too? Tana, stop trying to make Trevor happen. Trevor's never going to happen. I don't care Trevor gives the greatest lap dance on the universe. That has nothing to do with this whole sequence. Like, they're just messing around outside and they're trying to edit this together into a show. I'm actually embarrassed for this episode of television. But they got their money. 154, 155, 160. Wow. No that's disgusting. Ew. No one here has ever eaten a dollar bill like one time. Like just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, remember the time Tana made $160 and there was nothing interesting going on in the scene so she shoved a filthy dollar bill into her mouth and then they talked about it for legitimately two minutes of screen time at the end of this episode. Two minutes dedicated to how gross Tana is for putting money in her mouth, literally because she couldn't think of anything else to do, the producers couldn't think of anything else to make her do, so she just went, like, that's not funny. That's never been funny. You've never been funny, Tana. All my stuff is out of there, though. Like, it's completely empty. I'm that's so bad. happy. <laughs> Honestly, the second you move into that office, you're dead to me. <laughs> All right. Our group of friends typically gets off on, like, dark humor. So I think it's a lot harder for us to get across our point of, like, sadness. Yeah, you're describing being immature. You know, like, having no emotional intelligence whatsoever. That's what you're talking about. So it's not just because your friend group's humor is so fun and crazy and different. It's hard to relate to your stupid life. I took you in like a charity case <laughs> into my pool house. Are you okay today? I think Tan is loopy <laughs> and, and really, really tired. <laughs> See, like half the time I feel like the rest of the cast is just making excuses for why Tana makes no sense. Like she can't even get words out of her mouth because she's laughing so hard. This is the sound she makes when she's crying too. It's really hard to understand her. Peanut butter milk. So they give Jordan some gifts and this just kind of highlights how awkward it must be to be friends with Tana. Like nothing is good when you work for Tana Mojo. It's clear. Everybody really came together and made you something. Thank you. That's really awesome. I'm serious. <laughs> I really like it. What does it say? World's best manager. It says Jordan will run a world's worst manager. Oh. I thought they said best until just now. No, 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 no. Ah, see, she literally can't do anything nice. She can't do anything nice. She can't take anything seriously. And I don't know. It's not funny to me. She doesn't seem like someone I want to be friends with. Just saying. I also got you this bottle of water <laughs> and this dollar bill and this TV remote. <laughs> See, like, who are you, Tana? Who are you? And who gave you a show? That's actually it. That's the last scene of this. That's the most satisfying of a conclusion. We started off in a room with all four of these people talking about how Jordan's gonna move out of the pool house. And then at the end of it, he's already done it. And they've made 160 bucks, which helps nobody. And um, nothing changes because he's still her manager, despite what the title made you think. They do, however, tease some future episodes, so maybe this interests you. The oh, high wife. Mixing business and a personal relationship is just so complicated. Ooh, Jake Paul is gonna be on it, you guys. Jake Paul is hosting a version of this show that's for web videos, like viral videos, and Tana is his co-host. So I think that's gonna come into play this whole season about Jake and Tana being in this relationship, and then I guess they break up later while they're still making this MTV show. And to me, it's just like, okay, Okay, MTV, they're clearly doing a formula that works. For me, it was just so uninteresting. It was so uninteresting. That whole thing was confusing. Every time they kicked it back to Jordan, no, every time they kicked it back to Trevor and told us more about Trevor's life and the way Trevor was successful, I just got more and more confused. Like, none of this is about Tana, at least before she was like planning for her 21st birthday, which was really her wedding to Jake Paul. <sighs> I just don't like it. What do you guys think though? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on Tana and Mojo's unfiltered reality show. Should I cover the rest of this season in clip breakdowns? If so, give this video a big thumbs up. That'll let me know you want to see more clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly,
morning. If you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. It looks like that right down there. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. Turn on your notifications. Check me out on social media. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for getting unfiltered with me and Tana today. I will see you next time.